interview and job search strategies at work. I'm here with Mirna today. Hey, okay. Mirna, how are you today? I'm perfectly good. How are you, Gary? I'm good. Good. So um, thanks, Agreeing, for coming on the podcast. Very appreciate it. Very grateful that you did that. Thank you for inviting me here. So I want to ask you, um, how did you get started in your, in your current role? Well, uh, in my current role, I have been doing administrative um, position for quite a while now. Actually, I started with the contracting in 2007 with the previous con uh, contract, um, Combat Support Associate as administrative assistant. So it's, it's a long history. It's like 13 years of being an admin, but actually on and off, you know, because uh, in between I became an operations coordinator, handling budget and all that kind of stuff, which is totally out of the realm of being an admin, you know. And uh, along the way, before I got my position back as admin coordinator, um, I was doing data analyst job and also a document control coordinator job. Did I answer your question? Yeah, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, um, do you speak any other languages by chance? Yeah, I have. I speak, my, of course, my local language. That's uh, Filipino. And also I speak Arabic a little bit. Wow. And a little bit of Spanish because we were colonized uh, by Spain for almost four centuries. And a little bit of Italian because my sister got married to an Italian. Wow, that's nice. So feel free to <laughs> respond in any language you desire in the, in the next question. So I'll ask sure. you. <laughs> Feel free to respond in the next questions any, in whatever language you want. So um, I'll ask you the second question. Um, what, what excites you most about your, your chosen profession that you're in? Well, basically, uh, I think this is my principle since I started working way back when I was 17 years old. Okay. I want to make sure I just don't do the task assigned to me. Um, it's more of like, how will I make an impact to my colleagues or to the people I deal with or our customers or my colleagues? It's, it's finding something that will help them in any way. It's not just probably about work. It's not probably maybe they're having a bad day today or probably how in any way I can, I, I can be of help. You know, I guess I have been in customer service since I was 17. Wow. Wow. A lot of, uh, a lot of good skills you have uh, regarding that. Yeah, because like you see, Gary, like the skill sets, we learn that. And we acquire that in time. But what is more important is what gives us a sense of fulfillment is, end of the day, what did I do? Did I, number one, learn something new? Number two, maybe imparted something to my colleagues that they didn't know before? Or did I share my time to my colleague just to help out on how to do things? Did I welcome a new employee? You know, and did I give a ride to someone in our team who needs a ride? Something like that. Because, like, to me, it's not just, okay, I'm here in the top of the corporate ladder. But in the end, how did I get there? Did I step on someone's toes? I just want to be number one all the time and not give other, other people the chance to, to shine. You know? I, I don't know. Probably I got this from my father because my father has always been helping people and I witnessed it from the very young age, you know, that he would actually sacrifice most of himself just to go out of his way to help out people, you know. And at that time when I was young, I didn't understand that. I was actually thinking like, 
my mother was actually telling him, why do you have to even do this? It's late night night and this and that. But you know, my father would always tell her, I don't do this just to be popular. I don't do this just to show off and get a promotion or be ahead of other people. I do this because this is what makes me happy. This gives me a sense of fulfillment. Seeing that person, you know, relieve of whatever he's going through on that very moment or that day, to me, that's true sense of joy and happiness. You know, and no amount of prom promotion or, or salary raise will give you that, that feeling. Because if you're just concerned about the monetary, what you get out of it, it will pass because tomorrow you will, you will need something else. You know, but the sense of fulfillment stays with you forever. That, oh, one time I was there for that person. And that person is up there now. He's the CEO. And we still talk and he still appreciates me and still grateful that, hey, I, I've learned this from you, you know. And I have a lot of people doing that, like all my stuff before when I was still in retail here in Kuwait and back in the Philippines. They were still calling me and wanting me to see their grandkids, their, their kids, their, you know, the people they love. That, you know, because of you, I'm here now. And to me, wow, like, you still remembered me? Like, you were back in Germany or in the U.S. or you got married to this guy. And that was like 20 years ago when I was working with you. And that's simply amazing, you know. And some people are saying, like, how come you don't look your age? Because probably I see every good thing in everything. Yeah, because like a lot of people, like I've experienced a lot of challenges in my career from 17, okay? You might say it's sexual harassment. You might say it gender bias. You might say it like um, people are trying to uh, backstab you, whatever it is. But every single, every single one of them, I consider that as a blessing. Even my failed marriage, actually. Because he was my best teacher in life. I will not be as strong, as brilliant as I am right now, if not because of what pain he caused me. And now actually I'm even helping his family, you know, and we're like best friends now. And now my kids love him more than ever. Like, you know, because like here at work, in our career, a lot of people will try to pull you down. And I've experienced that million times believe me but I am so grateful because like I don't fight them sometimes I would give them the floor and for them to shine I, I actually don't need that you know there's a point in our life we call it like high low medium uh, part of our life and our career I believe I am now in my I would say close to the highest because I'm not thrilled with money. I'm not thrilled with success that people think that they are better than the rest. To me, I'm successful because I choose to be successful and because I'm at peace with myself. I'm not trying to impress. I'm comfortable and I love what I'm doing. And that's the main thing because like, you age and it shows in your face, the wrinkles and all that. Because you're trying to get ahead. You're so worried what's going to happen tomorrow. You're so worried about how much money I have and how much money do I put aside. I'm not saying that's wrong. But that's the teaching that we have been accustomed to and that we were taught to. So we don't enjoy our life, you know? Because like, okay, now you are taught to be number one. But you miss out on a lot of things in your life. And... You're not friendly. You're ruled by fear. And you want people to follow you because you're always right. And you don't, you don't embrace diversity. You don't embrace, you know, change. And to me, that's really sad, you know. And a lot of people, I was telling them, one of the team meetings here, I was telling them, once we go out there, nobody knows you are the Maximo Guru. We are all 
the same. You know, nobody knows your proba, nobody knows you're the director, nobody knows you're the program director. Out there, maybe, okay, you're driving a Mercedes, you're driving a, a Camari, a Camaro, whatever it is, but that's not you. That's not who you are. Okay, you might have reached that highest level in your career, but looking back in your life, did you get the chance to look at nature? Did you get the chance to walk by the seaside? Do you have the chance to actually just sit down and relax in a beach? You know? So things like that, you know. And, and a lot of people, I feel sad for them because they are so caught up with titles. You know, they feel the title define who they are. It's not. Because end of the day, okay, you are that, forgive my saying this, I forgive, forgive my French, okay, you are that BS that puppets the people. Do you like that? Of course not. Nobody would in the right sense of mind though. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure like, you know, and then I applied for a job actually. I was thinking of going back home and retire for good, right? And I was applying for this um, uh, call center company who is really well known back home. And it's about the age. Well, I'm, of course, that's their structure. They believe that they need to hire young people and young people are more uh, energetic. They welcome change and they're more into new technologies and all that. But you know, okay. Don't you see the fast turnover of your plantilla, your workforce? What does that say to you? What does that tell you? So to me, in my 17 years of management experience before I got to this contracting business, to me, like, um, what can that person contribute to your organization. Maybe it's for the well-being of the people. Maybe it's corporate social responsibility. We take care of each other. We look after each other's welfare. How can I make that person's life better today? I was telling him like that. I was watching here. I was standing trying to apply for a job for a company who doesn't even appreciate their employees and yelling and screaming. It's a hostile environment. Hell no, I don't want to be here. I just waited for this interview to come to you face to face and tell you probably how you can improve your process and how to deal with your employees. And I don't need this job, don't worry. You're hiring all those young people who are trying to get ahead of every single time they do something. And look at them now. Are they happy? They're shouting and screaming at each other. Is this a good environment for me? No. I need a peaceful environment that people love each other, value each other, and see the goodness in each other so we grow together. Not physically or not by age, but the company revenue grows because people love what they do and they love each other because they can't live without each other because you can't simply do everything on your own. I don't know if that sank in, but I told them I can even give you all lunch if you want. And they were like smiling and said, Mom, I am so sorry this happened to you. No, you don't have to be apologetic. As I said, that's, that's the culture of your company. What I'm giving you is a piece of my 20-something years or probably 30 years of experience having been in different industry. I sometimes just go, like, go in a company and, and, and talk to the manager, ask for the manager, just to ask how he's doing and how he's running his team. Here in Kuwait, I do that too. Like, sometimes I go to a Filipino chain here, uh, a restaurant that is run by a manager, a Filipino manager, and I ask the manager, like, Hi, how is your day today? I'm, I'm just eating here and I just want to say hello to you as being the manager. I know being an opening shift or a mid shift or a, a late shift kind of probably stressful, but you can change that. He said, ma'am, 
thank you for giving us a piece of this morning that makes us smile. I said, you know what? I want to ask you one question. And I'm hoping not to get a conventional answer. And said, oh my God, you make me nervous now. I've been through the interview process for a long time. I said, me too. You know, believe me, I get uh, nervous sometimes when I get to an interview because like, I've not done that for decades now. <laughs> and then he would start to smile. So I said, see, there's a smile in your face. So start your day with a smile with your team. And my question is, okay, when you come in at your workplace, what is the first thing that you do? Oh, that actually kept him silent for a moment. I said, I'll be honest with you, mom. You know, I worry a lot because I, how will I start my day today? We have this complaint. We have this. We have that. Oh, see? Okay. So, and then he asked me. So, he's trying to be smart. How do you start your day, ma'am? When you get to the office, I said, I said, First of all, I thank God that I have this great job. Of course, that's in my mind. Otherwise, people will think that I'm crazy. And then once I open the door, thank you, Lord, for this office. Thank you, Lord, for the people I work with. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to feel your presence again and make a difference in the people's lives. Thank you, Lord, for this abundance that I am able to share with everyone, you know? Abundance meaning not just I bring some goodies for the office, maybe abundance because I have time to spend with someone who's feeling down and, hey, how are you doing today? Maybe that's the only thing he needs to, to get back on track. Maybe he was so depressed. Or maybe he had a bad night or maybe he didn't wake up or she didn't wake up in the right side of the bed, as we call it. You know, he said, wow, you know, ma'am, I think I will start doing, starting my day by doing the same thing as you do. And then instead of me asking, he asked me the second question. How old are you, ma'am? I said, I'm 50. He said, really? You're 50? You look like maybe like 40. You're pulling my leg now. I said, no, ma'am. You know, the reason why... I see that you are so, uh, how do you say that? Your aura is different because you're so positive. I said, you know what? I've been alone for a long time and I need to find something that will excite my life in a positive way. You know, challenges are always there at work and family and environment and the heat in Kuwait. But you know what? I am so grateful that, you know, I'm here and I'm healthy and I have a nice work. I work with nice people. You know, the company is very generous. You know, to some people, the company is not. But to me, it is because I'm able to do whatever I want to do. I am able to travel. I'm able to do my charity works. So to me, it's a blessing. And then I ask him uh, the second question. I ask him, okay, who is the most important person in your life once you get inside the store or your office? He said, ma'am, of course, the customer. Okay, he even, you know, was giving me this, like, wow, it's a customer. And he thought that that would also be my answer. So don't you think so? I said, you know what? That is an answer of a traditional or conventional manager. To me, when I step, first step in my office is my people. I am thankful that I'm given the opportunity and the responsibility to shape people's lives, you know, and to be a part of it. And that's why if they are happy and they know that you are sincere in supporting them and bringing out the best in them, you don't even have to tell them what to do because they feel your sincerity and you are a genuine manager concerned about their welfare. So even without you 
the store or the shop or the restaurant or whatever it is, it will run smoothly because you are not just bringing out the best in them, but you make them part of every decision. Every single one counts. If a pizza has one slice cut, so it's not a whole pizza anymore, right? So it's not a whole. It's just a part of a pizza. But every single one is important. When I was in retail, some managers or some operations managers that I worked with, you know, different nationalities back home and here, they were telling me, how come you spend some time with your security guard and your cleaners? You eat with them. And I said, what's wrong with that? I would treat the CEO of this company the same way I treat a cleaner. No difference at all. Everyone deserves due respect. Not because that person can give me a raise or promotion. I will treat him better than the cleaner or the security. Every single day I come to the, to the lobby and I see the security from the, after I park my car. Hi, good morning. How are you doing today? Have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. I don't even ask him or them to call me ma'am, but I guess I, I've earned that because I respected them that much. Like the recent Eid, you know, I just thought, I am so blessed. Why can I not give them an Eid cake? So I bought like 10 cakes, give it to each department, you know, 60 KD worth of something that, you know, probably like 60 people or maybe more ate that cake, you know. That is just simple way of gratitude. You know, a lot of us are always complaining about a lot of things, not seeing the good thing in every single thing that sometimes we consider bad, but actually that has to happen for you to get to the next step or the next stage of your life. Because without that, you cannot be the mirror that you are now, you know? And that's why I have always been supportive of my kids, whatever they want to do in their lives. You know, they, my, my two boys were, went astray, but I never really like blame them because actually sometimes I blame myself because I was not with them when they were growing up. And also they don't have a father, but Hey, like, you know, to me, I, one time, that the principal called me, and I did not even question my son about what he did. I took him to um, Tagaytay, and then we went horseback riding. And then after that, he was the one who even opened it up, you know, because, like, he is going through something that I don't know. And for me to be questioning him and asking him and putting pressure on him, no, I'm not going to do that to my kid. You know, they may not have graduated in De La Salle or Ateneo or something like that. But they're happy with what they're doing because that's their chosen career, you know. And not me pressuring them. I want you to be a doctor. I want you to be a lawyer. I want you to be known some, someday to keep our family's tradition of doctors and lawyers and, and blah coming from... Um, prestigious universities in the Philippines. No, no. I want them to do what they want to do, you know, because parenting is not, I think this is not about the career now, but I just want to say this to whoever is your audience, you know, or your listener. But to me, working is like also parenting. Like I was telling my, my kids, I'm here As your parent, not to make you lean on me as a parent, but to make leaning uh, unnecessary. I have to make you dependent, independent. I'm sorry. I have to make you dependable. You have to have a strong backbone and foundation. And how will you ha have that if I will always tell you what to do? You know? So they're doing what they're doing. They're loving their lives. 
you know, they may not be having the, you know, big salary, fat paycheck every payday, but they like what they're doing. They have time to go riding the motorcycle. And my eldest son is actually vice president of the rider F-150 in, in the Philippines. So, you know, I see him happy doing what he wants to do. But of course, we are still um, trying to save up some money so at least we can continue with the outreach project that we want to do. You know, our life now is more geared towards, okay, while we are trying to be successful in the professional and career side, we try to do something to help the people. And my eldest son is also uh, a barangay official. So we're trying to convert our property to help out the community by putting up a basketball court in a multi-purpose hall. And we will, I will conduct some, something like this also to help the women empower them and making sure that they find time for themselves. And I would like to make them realize that there's more after raising a family, you know, and there's more after struggling with your career. You know, maybe do some of my sessions of meditation and yoga as well. So to bring peace in their, in their lives, you know, and make them realize that I can do more. There's more to life than just being who I am now. I was just listening like, wow, that's so great. Like, it's 50 years. Come on. <laughs> like you're, I mean, you sound like um, Bob Proctor basically, oh, you know, or you know. Tony Robbins, because it's like, <laughs> really good. I mean, wow. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so grateful. Yeah. Thank you for the kind words, Gary. Yeah. You know, Gary, um, I would say this, there's very instrumental people who helped me to where I am now. When I was at the library, I got hold of this book from Dr. Wayne Dyer. He is, you know, I really felt so sad when he passed on two years ago. He is my mentor, my spiritual guide. He talks about how to change our thoughts to change our lives. You know, I am reading his books over and over again and actually even bought the CDs and played that in my car. He's my constant companion. And actually, he affiliated himself with Hay House, with Louis Hay, who also passed on last year. And that devastated me as well. Um, but, you know, they were there when I needed them. I found that book and everything changed. He talks about Deepak Chopra. He talks about Rumi. He talks about Gandhi. He talks about Muhammad. He talks about Christ. He talks about all the good figure in our history. In even in the ancient time, talks about the Bible, talks about Quran, talks about you know uh, what the um, the Jews believed in, you know, and he welcomes everything, and that's the good thing about him. Like he doesn't criticize, oh, the Christians are better than the Muslim, or me being an American is better than the other nationalities. Actually, he tells us how to. Be in harmony with everything. And actually, he also um, worked with Greg Braden. Greg Braden is also, I think he was an engineer in NASA, if I was not mistaken. But, you know, they're into this thing about uh, healing yourself. Actually, I admire that and it happened to me as well. That's why... I am an advocate of their teachings and that's why I was trying to get hold of them and I read Tracy, the CEO now of uh, uh, Hay House. They send me every time this email and I reply to them. I wanted their teaching to be in the Philippines, you know, but maybe this podcast can help me do that because like I emailed, maybe they have so much tons of you know, of, of emails coming from their, their viewers, their listeners, their, but I never got a straight response of, hey, okay, we'll support you to go to the Philippines and help teach people what you learned from us. 
you know, because of course they're a big company, they're a big publishing house. And I, I just don't know how to, to, you know, touch base with them. Like they are in India now because of course, a lot of the gurus are from India also, like Deepak Chopra, Rumi and Gandhi and all that figure. But I want to help the Filipinos, my Kabayans, you know, I want them to realize how important is it is to love yourself in order for you to love somebody. Because if you don't love yourself, how can you even be loving someone else? You know, at before I thought sacrificing what I believe is for me, just for the happiness of someone, I'm doing something really good. But actually in the end, I end frustrated. I, I end up lonely. I end up feeling like I should have done that. All regrets, you know? But now I think like I, I'm ready to show my countrymen there's more to to all this all these high tech things that sometimes make you loan money just to get it. You know, you are trying to live beyond your means and end up like paying all your paychecks to whatever gadgets you need to have, whatever new things that you need to do. I have nothing against technology. Don't get me wrong. But if technology is used to help people make their, their lives better, like, like this podcast can probably touch someone's life, then I'm for it. But if for you just to show off and to show that you are up to date with the technology, but you cannot really afford it, that's the wrong way of living your life. Living your life to creditors that you don't have peace of mind. That how do I pay this? How do I pay that? How do I settle this? How to maybe I'll get into court because of this. You know? So bottom line is I am really hoping that somehow this podcast would reach Hay House or Reed Tracy of, of Hay House Publishing. I really would like the teachings I've learned from Louis Hay, from Dr. Wayne Dyer especially, and from um, uh, Alfred, uh, no, Hicks, the Hicks uh, couple. I, I forgot their name now because I'm probably nervous in this podcast because it's my first time to be doing this. If, if I can get them to, to help me set up their self-help teachings to the Filipinos, please help me. Because a lot of people are, you know, most, most of those who come overseas, like I myself, because I don't get the opportunity back home that I have here. You know, I was operations manager in the Philippines, but I'm not getting that much money. Because it's more of like, I know the cost of living there is different and probably the pay structure is different. But I want to go back there and do something to help people. But I want, it, I want them to see it in me first, you know. And a lot of people here appreciate me now. But I think one day I have to go back to my place and help them too. Because if I'm helping people overseas, I think I should be doing that more in my country. And I strongly believe that if I can bring those teachings back home with the help of the speakers like, like the speakers at Hay House have right now, it will change, it will make a big change in my country. And I will be forever grateful about that. That's why I'm looking for a big place to buy because I want to start a community of good people again. You know, what do I mean good people? I'm not saying other people are bad, but don't get me wrong. People who know what they really want, 
and discover the happiness in everything they do, every single thing that comes in their life. There is something God is teaching you or the supreme power or whatever religious belief you have, you know. End of the day, you know, we might be different in religious beliefs, but if it's for God and of God, we should be able to get together and get along. Because if you feel that you are better than me or the rest of us, then it's not going to get you anywhere. Okay, so do you have more questions for me? Can you, uh, can you just give like a little... I don't know, a 30 second little, you know, something inspirational in your native tongue, maybe, you know, languages you speak, can you give, you know, like a 30 second, you know, um, the person who's listening doesn't speak English, they speak your native tongue. Can you just say something to, to help them um, achieve their goals in, in your native tongues? Do you mind doing that? Of course not. Well, magandang umaga sa inyong lahat, uh, sa mga kababayan kong Pilipino. Una sa lahat, nagpapasalamat ako kay Mr. Gary McNeely for the opportunity sa pagkakataon na ibinigay niya sa akin para makausap kayo at maibahagi sa inyo ang kaalaman ko at ang mga natutunan ko sa buhay for the last uh, 51 years, I guess. Hindi madaling tanggapin na parati tayo dapat maging masaya, parati tayo dapat maging uh, positibo sa ating pananaw sa buhay. Lalo na kung may mga pinagdadaanan tayo na hindi naiintindihan ng mga tao sa paligid natin. But isa lang ang masasabi ko sa inyo, nag-isa ako ng mahabang panahon Maraming trahedya, maraming pagsubok ang dumaan sa akin. Pero hindi ko nakalimutan kung sino ako, kung ano ako, kung ano ang gusto ko, kung ano ang uh, purpose, ano ang aking uh, rason bakit ako nandito sa ibang bansa. Okay. Kahit na nung nandun pa ako sa Pilipinas, Ang importante sa akin ay siguro sumunod sa kung ano yung patakaran, kung nandun man ako sa kumpanya na yon, nandito ako sa pamilya na to, or nandito ako sa trabaho na to. Meron sila mga kanya-kanya mga patakaran eh. Pero hindi ko nililimitahan ang sarili ko kung ano yung patakaran na nasa libro. Kung meron akong magagawa para matulungan ko ang kapwa ko, kahit anumang nationality ka, anuman sa parte ng mundo ka man galing, wherever you are from across the globe, it doesn't matter. Whatever I can share with you, anuman ang pwede kong maitulong sa inyo, maibahagi sa inyo, gagawin ko sa abot ng makakaya ko. Pero ang unang-unang dapat natin gawin ay we have to work on ourselves. Ikaw muna, sa sarili mo. Kasi hindi ka pwedeng tumulong sa iba. You cannot help other people if you don't value yourself. Valuing or pagpapahalaga sa sarili ay hindi lang kung ano yung na-achieve mo ngayon. Hindi lang yung success mo sa trabaho, in your work. Hindi lang whatever you have acquired. Uh, that's not it. What I'm talking about is you have to love yourself. Like sabi nga ni Miss uh, Louise Hay ng Hay House. Mirror work. Tumingin ka sa salamin, look at the mirror and tell yourself, I love you, Mirna. I really, really love you. I'm making good choices now in my life. Gumagawa ako ng mga pinipili ko ang mga gagawin ko sa buhay ko. So, kapag natutunan mo na baguhin ang mga dati mong paniniwala, na akala mo makakapagpabuti sa iyo dahil itinuro ng mga magulang mo, tinuro sa eskwela, 
you know, I'm not saying what your parents and what your teachers or professors or your, your bosses has told you or has taught you is wrong. I'm not saying that. That's part of the protocol. That's part of the paradigm that they are into. Um, yun yung parte ng organization nila, kaya kailangan nilang gawin yun. But go beyond that. Go beyond of what you think you are now. Go beyond, umalis ka dun sa position mo. Just don't focus on your job title. Don't focus on your brand new car. Don't focus on your big house. Don't focus on your, oh, my kids are working in NASA or something like that. Because that's ego. Okay. Once you have that big ego, which Dr. Dyer says, and I, I quote him, edging God uh, out. E-G-O, edging God out. Whatever religion you have, I know every religion is teaching its, um, its members something good. But you don't limit yourself to what is being taught to you. You go into deeper reality of yourself by talking to your divine being inside of you. I know this might sound um, uh, highfalutin or sounding maybe, um, how would I term it in, in Filipino? In Filipino, I'm lost of words of, because I have been working for Americans for a long time and I'm not saying that I for, have forgotten my native language. But since even in college, we were speaking English, that's why I feel that I am more comfortable in that language because I do it every day here. Um, importante kasi na lumabas ka doon, palabasin mo yung kaluluwa mo. Eh. Dahil yung nasa loob mo is parang nahadlangan ng kung ano yung mga itinuro sa iyo nililimitahan niya kung ano yung dapat mong gawin dahil ito yung sinabi nila this is what they say is good for me this is what is right for me things like that you know like every single day i thank god that i am alive araw-araw Nagpapasalamat ako sa Diyos pag bukas ang mata ko agad. Sometimes because I have been doing it for a long time dahil ginagawa ko ng matagal na panahon, kahit may, yung subconscious mind ko is nagpapasalamat na hindi pa dumidilat yung mata ko. My eyes are not opening yet but I'm already, my subconscious being is saying thank you to God for a brand new day. And I feel that. But syempre kapag nagsisimula ka pa lang, if you are just starting to do this realization of, of who you are. You're not into this level yet. Because I have been doing this for seven years. That's why uh, I can talk to you about it this easy right now. You know? But when you are just starting, kung nagsisimula ka pa lang, you will find it difficult to thank God if you are going through something really horrible or terrible or, you know, it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of commitment and dedication that you want to change yourself. You know? And whatever you think your guts is telling you, I think to me is working. You know, I believe in my intuition. And I believe that. Uh, yun na nga, ang sinasabi ko ay um, importante munang we have to take care of ourselves first before we even reach out to another. You know, it's probably gonna take us a year or two years of work 
But to me, that is the most effective way because if you feel you are happy, you are contented, you are out there to be of service to others, then it will be easy for you to reach out to another individual. I hope, um, sana, uh, may natutunan kayo sa sinabi ko. I hope you got something out of this um, short talk. And um, if there's any more chance that I can, you know, be invited again to talk about something different, you know, I welcome every topic actually. So I'm just here. And if you need anything, you want to ask me anything, uh, Mr. Gary McNeely will probably, uh, you know, you can contact him or you can directly contact me. He has my contact information and I'm just here, you know, anytime, any day, 24-7. <laughs> you know, I was watching this uh, show, God Bef Befriended Me. Eh, I love it. Like, you know, every single time he's just there to help out. And I think I dedicate my life to helping out people. Well, Mirna, I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, you know, very, very insightful stuff. Uh, you have anything else you want to talk about or any follow, um, things you would just want to uh, discuss? Well, just uh, be good to each other and be kind to one another, as Ellen always say. Be generous. <laughs> I always watch her show. How I wish I can be a millionaire like her so I can share a lot of my financials too, you know? I do a small little of this and that, you know? Like last uh, three days ago, I'm here again sharing a story. Last two days ago, I went walking by the seaside and I left my phone in the bathroom and this lady was the cleaning lady was running and rushing the old lady poorly a poor old lady like she was like trying to catch up with me that you know giving back my phone and i was so amazed how honest she was so when i came back to my apartment you know i said like i'm gonna take a shower and i went to a gold shop and bought her a necklace and with a heart as a uh, pendant was heart big heart to show her how i appreciate her pure heart you know but how i wish i can do more you know it's not too much money but at least i want to show her that she is valued and her her pure heart and her honesty will go a long way you know and she cried and she said, oh, you're like my daughter. You gave me a gold necklace. And then I gave her the receipt just in case I don't want her to get into problem, you know. Because like, oh no, for them, they, they check their stuff and all that kind of stuff. And maybe they will say, you stole this. I don't want to give her that problem. So I gave her the receipt. But you know, simple things that can, you know, make people smile. <laughs>